These are the Scottish Highlands. Made up of epic locks and open, treeless landscapes. An iconic and distinctive part of the world. But you probably wouldn't imagine huge expanses of rich pine forest as part of this picture. Well, this is in fact what a large proportion of the Scottish Highlands looked like about 5,000 years ago. There were once 1.5 million hectares of native pine woods. This was known as the Caledonian Forest. Forming part of the boreal forest that sweeps across the Northern Hemisphere, the Caledonian forest was, and still is, a unique habitat found nowhere else in the world. So, what makes it unique? Looking around, you'll notice a lot of Scots pine. The Scots pine is actually one of the most common species of pine in the world, occurring naturally across the Northern Hemisphere. But what makes its presence here unique is Scots pine is the dominant species of conifer, something that's found nowhere else on Earth. Ancestral Scots pines arrived around about 9,000 years ago and have in essence been genetically isolated from their mainland counterparts, creating a pool of genetically unique individuals. Nestled in between the pines are a number of other tree species and plant species. And there is a huge range of other organisms, some of which are rare in other parts of the British Isles. This combination of habitat structure, genetic diversity and species diversity makes the Caledonian forest a unique ecosystem. The forest at its largest extent, around about 5,000 years ago, stretched for over 1.5 million hectares. But a combination of a reduction in rainfall, as well as felling for timber, overgrazing and an increase in deer herbivory, have resulted in only 1% of the forest remaining. It now only remains in a few small isolated fragments, like this area at Glenmore Park. Because of the extinction of large predators like wolves and the use of land for deer shooting, deer numbers have increased exponentially over the past 300 years. And this creates a problem. New seedlings are eaten by the swelling deer population and very little recruitment of young trees occurs. This has meant that the forest consists of a large proportion of older granny trees and this is bad news, as eventually these trees will die and there'll be no new trees to replace them. So are there any solutions? The poor deer that by some consider to be the enemy, they're not the enemy, they're just a victim of their own success. There's different ways of doing this, of course. So you can either reduce the deer, the herbivore impact, or you can exclude those herbivores from the area of land. So there could be fencing put up to remove the deer for the life of the fence, which would possibly be 30 years, you would be excluding people from accessing the land. You would be increasing the density of those deer by when you excluded them from this area. So, or you could try and do something a bit more natural, which was to reduce those herbivores to a level which you would expect to see in continental Europe, where some of the apex predators, for example, are present. 
So why is this an important habitat to conserve? Well, for one, it's a unique ecosystem found nowhere else in the world. It's also a refuge for many rare species found nowhere else in the UK or in Europe. And on a broader scale, the forest provides a plethora of ecosystem services. This is one of the most unique parts of the UK and should be protected for future generations. If you'd like to find out more about this special corner of our planet, then have a look at the links provided in the description down below. And let us know if you visited this area of Scotland and think it's something worth preserving.